start down at the metering and regulating station down here. So that you can take a look at that. And hopefully it's operating because it's really loud. So we're at the intersection here of uh, uh, Quincy and Braintree. And Braintree, yeah. yeah. And right through, yeah. So all the kind of intersection right here. Right. Uh, yeah. Oh. <coughs> Sorry, I thought it shut off, but it didn't. down gas whenever there's an overpressure situation, but they're doing maintenance. Yeah, unfortunately, if you like the side of the bridge where people are sitting right into the bridge to close. So the blow downs go up onto the bridge. So a couple of things have happened with the seminar station in the past two years. There have been two incidences of a frozen valve. The first one in the winter of 2017 in January, they released 238,000 cubic feet cubic tons of methane before they could shut it down. It took them three hours. No one knew who was responsible for shutting it down. And when Algonquin was brought in front of the town council and asked if you fix the valve, they said, no, we're not going to do anything. Even though there was an advisory that they should cap the valves so they wouldn't freeze. Fast forward to January of 2019, a similar valve froze. It was incredibly fortunate that National Grid saw the drop in pressure and got it shut down because if they hadn't, they would have blown up about 7,000 houses in Rhode Island, just like they did in Lawrence. And this was from a drop in pressure, not a raise in pressure. So they haven't done anything about that, but it caused 7,000 people to be out of their homes for about a week in Rhode Island. And that was a valve right here at this meeting in regulating station. So it's, it is a problem. They've also, we've also had in the last two and a half years, Two incidences, they've got corrosion on the pipes. They're down there doing stuff now, supposedly doing upgrades, but they've had divers in there because they've had two cases of corrosion. So we know that the pipes sitting in a corrosive salt environment for 20 years, they're not gonna be stable. And the bigger problem is if they wanna raise the pressure from running at about 750 PSI to running to 1440 PSI, 
there's going to be an accident, especially for the compressor station that we give vibration mm -hmm. and back heat to the compressor lines. Back. So that's, that's, that's Betsy. That's she won't hurt us. Um, <laughs> there's, you know, there's not, it's here, it runs pipe, it runs gas from Pennsylvania to here on the I-9, and they reversed the flow just a year or so ago, and it now pushes gas on the I-10 from here through Boston Harbor and all the way up to Canada. So for exploitation for out of Canada, right? Yeah. For exploitation to out of Canada, Europe and China and right. other locations. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, so let's let's keep going. Let's keep going. <laughs> it's raining. <laughs> That's going to be the construction site still. Nope. Oh, yes, right here. Right. Right, right in here. here. In this location here? Yep. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> Ed Murky. Reverend Betsy Sowers. Betsy Sowers. Um, all right. Just came from the DEP where we made one part of the action this morning. Sorry. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Sorry. How did it go? How did it feel? Ah. Uh, it went well. We didn't get media. I see. Yes. Now it feels like it's stopping. So that's I good. Know. <laughs> I can grab an umbrella out of my trunk. Maybe I'll set for a few minutes. This is supposed to start till 11. <laughs> when has Massachusetts weather ever behaved? <laughs> Actually, the original. In the original industrial age, they picked all the best real estate right on the water. Right? Yeah. yeah. But you know what's funny about this real estate? In 1898, it did not exist. Right now, we would be in about four or five feet of water. This, so this is landfill. This is landfill. It's 100% coal ash, clinkers, burner bricks, industrial waste, and diesel oil. So don't dig. <laughs> You're okay on top. Don't yeah. dig. Yeah. Yeah, I think she's getting an umbrella. How you doing? Good, how you doing, Andrea? Good, nice to see you again. Thank you. Good to see you. It's a joint effort, isn't it? Oh, it is. Oh, do we take a tree? Yeah. Oh, what the? <clears throat> they took our tape down. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding, right? <laughs> that was so cold. So, if you look down onto the beach here, you'll see it's, it looks like it's covered with rocks. It's actually covered with clinkers, which is burned down coal, burner bricks, and all kinds of waste. These burner, these clinkers are being found out on Deer Isle. A clinker is? A clinker is a piece of coal that's been burned down to its final usable source. In the old days with um, coal furnaces, it caused your coal furnace to shut down. So what Edgar, which this is Calpine right here, this power plant, that was Edgar coal burning plant. And what Edgar did, so that everybody knows what they're standing on, is they took all of the coal ash, the clinkers, the burner bricks, and the industrial waste, and they literally created this peninsula. This peninsula in 1898 did not exist. You'd be in water. So about five, six inches underneath the topsoil is all toxic waste. Now we've pulled 
toxic waste from the bank, coal ash, and we pulled clinkers. They're now at a laboratory in Bo at Boston University being analyzed to see what we get out of it. Mm. But what happened here, and we don't want to get too, too close, is there's an undercut in the soil. There was a storm in March of 2018 where the water, see where the water is now? The water was lifted right here. The storm was so strong, it took the water up to the level, it was over the sea walls. This is a FEMA flood zone, and it's undercutting the bank. And as it's undercutting the bank, more of the toxin, the clinkers and the coal ash and stuff are going out into the beach. <clears throat> so that's what's sort of happening here. This park is actually a conservation set aside that was given to the town of Weymouth in order for Calpine, then Scythe, to have their operating license. So this park is actually, they can't do anything about it, although we know that they will close it if they get that compressor station in. They will close? The park. It'll be unusable. <coughs> It'll, It'll be, be unusable. unusable. So this park closes, if they, and, <coughs> and where will the construction of the compressor begin? Hopefully well, not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, right. So the other thing, just so you know, running along the fence line as we go up to the MWRA housing station is a 60 year question. Hi! Hello, buddies. Watch the dogs here. Hello. And you can see how close the houses are. The closest house to the compressor station is only 850 feet away. the best vantage point you're going to see of the property that the compressor station will occupy. Hopefully not. At 4.3 acres, it is the smallest piece of land on which a transmission compressor station is placed in the United States. There is no place smaller than this. It also is so small that the company, Algonquin Spectra Enbridge, cannot get insurance to cover an accident. They fall outside of what we call the gap industry guidelines. So say that again. It's so small, they do not have enough space. They, meaning Enbridge. Enbridge. Cannot? Cannot get insurance, cannot mm -hmm. be underwritten by the insurance industry because they, the buildings are supposed to be 500 feet away from one another. They don't have the space. The compressor uh, it will be right sort of where these trees are here. It will be less than 40 feet from that fence. The blow down stack will be approximately where that big tree is. And again, that's when they have to release gas, which they can do up to 400 times a year. It's going to be 175 feet from the MWRA pumping station. And that is also where the intake air vents are for the pumping station. So you'll be driving methane into a station that's full of methane. It's probably not a good idea. So this, and then this land here is, so they can't get insurance. Algonquin, in an SEC filing, Algonquin stated they do not have the assets if they damage the bridge, the pumping station, and mm -hmm. forget about your house or Twin Rivers or anything like that. And also I want to point out Twin Rivers. So if you look straight through and you see that big crane and you can see some tanks over there, a couple of those tanks are filled with hydrogen. This is a hydrogen bomb. When they have an accident at the compressor station, a fire burns at approximately 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. That will take out those tanks. It'll take out Boston. And most of Quincy. And most of Weymouth. 
Um, you know, we've Frank talked and talked to, we're blue in the face to the regulatory agencies, and unfortunately, Senator Markey, they just don't care. Well, the ship's coming through, Alice. Oh, yeah. It's a shipping channel. This is a designated port, one of the largest in Massachusetts. Sitco Terminal is right over there in Mike's neighborhood. The huge tankers come through here. They're so big, you feel like you can touch them. They come through here, the bridge lifts up, they go to Sitco. So the nightmare scenario is the bridge is up, people are stuck, there's a tanker waiting right there, there's an accident, it takes out the tanker, it takes out the bridge, it takes out everything. Because the tankers are filled with either diesel, which is in particular, it's hard to burn, but they're also filled with gasoline. So it just depends on what boat is sitting there right at that particular moment. Okay, can I just go back again? You see, you're saying that because this compressor station is on such a small parcel of land that is in excess of what the recommended site would be, that they cannot receive insurance. insurance. And that the corporation itself is saying, Algonquin or, Algonquin. The, uh, or Enbridge? Well, see, Enbridge is not responsible <clears throat> for Algonquin's messes. If Algonquin has, you know, well, this okay, is the okay. research we've done. If Algonquin has an accident, the parent company, and this is apparently decided law, the parent company, which is Enbridge, has no liability. And yeah. so, All right, so we have to explore that. Yeah, that yeah. That's a very important thing to know, that if there is an accident, and an accident here, because of its location, could have uh, catastrophic consequences just because of all of the other um, flammable. The, the law of unintended consequences could kick in very quickly in this area, but that um, the, the uh, parent corporation, Enbridge, the Canadian company, you are saying, is contending that they're uh, protected from any liability and it would just be Algonquin and Algonquin does not have the resources then to compensate people who live in this area. Right. In the event. Right. Okay. So we have to, you know, yes, go, keep going. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big problem. That's big. Well, you know, interestingly, because nuclear power is in the same situation, which is why uh, we actually had to pass the Price Anderson Act, which actually puts a limit on what the liability is for a nuclear power plant in terms of all the damage, and the rest of it's just picked up by the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because you couldn't actually ever pay for. As a corporation, the worst case scenario. But here, we're not talking nuclear power. People don't associate natural gas with the same kind of situation. But because of its location, it cannot receive insurance. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And more volatile. Huh? And more volatile. Yeah. Right. The, yeah. the uh, recommended space, like I said, between the buildings, and there'll be a compressor building, an administrative building, an oil separator, uh, which is highly flammable, and what caused the explosion <coughs> in Armada Township back in the winter. Uh, in Michigan, they can't be 500 feet away from one another. They simply don't have the space with all of the piping and all that other stuff that they're trying mm -hmm. to put there. Mm -hmm. So they can't receive insurance. We've talked to the state about this. Again, the agencies don't care. So, all right. Okay, and additionally, additionally, there's a second pipeline coming along after this. And they, they make the argument that no, that thing hasn't been filed. But it's actually on the Enbridge uh, website. They the second it. pipeline would go where? Access right beside the other one. So when and it's going to be larger with more. And pressure. that would come south up and, and send more natural gas north. Is yeah. that it? Exactly. Towards Canada. Yeah. Yep. And and the thing is, it's so also I, I guess it's part of the filing with FERC. They're supposed to uh, say, is there a, is there a better way of doing this? It turns out the Iroquois pipeline connects to this pipeline down in Connecticut. It's got three percent uh, utilization on it. And it goes up to the Trans Canada pipeline, which goes across Canada, and runs to that LNG plant. So they don't. You've got a pipe that's not being used, and they want to. The run it. They're not using the Iroquois pipeline right now. Right. They exactly. Want to, they, they want, want to, to expand here, uh, and uh, and you're saying on their website, which we have to look at. Okay, yeah. maybe you can the send Enbridge it to us. website. Yeah. Excuse you me. Know the Enbridge There's website. There's a second new pipeline they would be building. Exactly. Yep. Okay. And, and they talk about this pipeline and is bringing it the, and bringing the natural gas through Weymouth. Yeah. Yeah. The Spectre CEO has called this pipeline his Trojan horse, meaning that once this is permitted, they'll tack on the other one to this. Mm -hmm. He has said that in public. We got his transcript. Okay. Good. So let's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what's that? Sorry. I don't want to push you. <laughs> 
just hoping the battery holds out on this thing. At least that was what they said. Well, and who owns access to the police? <laughs> Enbridge. Enbridge. Yep, Is that what he's talking about right now? The yep. second pipeline? Yep. Oh, I see. It would extend another hundred miles of pipe through Massachusetts, and we're going to get one turbine for this compressor station. They'd add one to two more. The building itself, the a turbine to generate yeah, the comp compressor that's what itself. The compressor is. And compressor How are you doing? Turbine. You don't spend on your life. Thank you. <laughs> Good to see you. Yeah. Um, so this one would have one compressor turbine. The access northeast would bring in one to two more. They're building the building to house five. <laughs> so why are you building a building for five when you're telling us you're only going to have one? Because it's more comfortable. Oh yeah. So. Oh my goodness. So this is all landfill here? Yep. Wow. They did a good job. <laughs> I knew what they were doing, huh? but it was for industrial purposes. Yeah. 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 It wasn't It's a lovely view, though. Yeah. Do you think about the title DDP? What a misnomer! They've done nothing. Well, their boss doesn't want them to do anything. So what are we saying here on the left? Okay. What is this building? Well, we got to stop over here. We're going to come out okay, to the good. point here. The MWRA station. Um, so, still under court authority for the Boston Harbor cleanup. What do you um, mean? Is it pumping right now? Yep. Okay. Probably pumps all the time. <laughs> 16 yeah. pounds, 60 million gallons of sewage a day. Where does it get clean? Deer Island. Oh, so this gets sent by pipe to Deer Island. To Deer Island. Oh, okay. Then, but Are we going to stop here? Yep. But then the good part is, is that it also, once it's passed, it gets sent back to the fertilizer palletizing plant eventually. The parade. Alice, we in Quincy again? Yes. Right. Yes. I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel the warmth, Mayor. I can feel it. They ship our storage to Quincy. So, yes, welcome to Quincy. We are in Quincy right now, believe it or not. It cuts off a little point over here. Um, and then I just want to mention briefly that Quincy was never given the respect of Enbridge, that they should have been filing all of this stuff with Quincy's Conservation Commission as well. But Enbridge is, oh well, you know, even though they are a direct abutter and actually own property here, they were not given any, you know, ability to fight this from their Conservation Commission standpoint, just so you know. So this is the MWRA pumping station. It services 14 pounds or 16 pounds on the South Shore. It pumps 60 million gallons of sewage over to Deer Isle a day. It's processed at Deer Isle. It comes back through another pipe it goes over to the fertilizer pelletizing plant, which is just across the river from Calpine in East Braintree in Mike's neighborhood again. Uh, we put a lot of stuff in Mike's neighborhood. <laughs> so um. that's what this does. Any type of accident at the compressor station, like I said, 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, even if it doesn't damage the brick building, it's gonna take out the computer systems. The computer systems shut down. We've got 60 million gallons of raw sewage going into the bay here and on into Boston Harbor. They are still under court order for the cleanup of Boston Harbor. We've had a very difficult time, the MWRA. We've, we've gone and done tap dances and we've talked to all of them and they just don't care. So our attitude is that is financial malfeasance. They are under order to protect their properties and they have said nothing about this whole situation, a situation that could cause them great, great harm. But then it gets better for Quincy. <laughs> That brick building over there is Orion Towers. It is federal, right? Federal low income housing. It has mostly elderly um, Asian Americans. So that is also Germantown. And Germantown is a recognized state and federal environmental justice community. Behind Twin Rivers is Quincy Point. Again, state and federal recognition for environmental justice communities. Uh, 
Spectra, Enbridge, Algonquin, all the same people in their environmental assessment report said they did not have to care. Didn't matter. And the state refused us the MEPA review. MEMA took a powder. Nobody looked at any of that. Our communities, of course, right over there, highly populated. You know, it looks a little sparse along the beach there. Those neighborhoods are really, really packed, like Quincy Point. So this will affect, even if, and it's just not going to happen, but even if they don't have a catastrophic accident, the health and safety of all of the residents in these areas is going to be horribly affected. And environmental justice was supposed to mean that, you know, you stop dumping on people. They're dumping on us. And Senator Markey, one of the things that we're most concerned about is that this is precedent setting, um, mm -hmm. not just here, but nationally. You know, when you look at the coal ash, when you look at the insurance, uh, not being able to get that, when you look at the, the acreage and how it's going to be the smallest parcel of land, then you add in that there's 6 million gallons of sewer traveling through here, you, you add in the $244 million bridge, everything is just, uh, a, a, you know, really ripe for any one of these permits to be denied or for FERC mm -hmm. to have seen this in the first place. So if they allow this here and this goes through, there's, there's no limit to, you know, where they can place these in the future. Yeah. Senator, in, in the truest sense of the phrase, this is the wrong project at the wrong place at the wrong time. It truly is. It's a recipe for disaster on many fronts. Mm -hmm. we're, we're asking them just to, uh, there are alternative sites. We're saying this is the wrong location for compressor station. There are other places they can put it. Anybody that comes down here, you don't have to be a scientist to stand here to look around to see that it's the wrong spot for a compressor station. And, uh, you know, picture says a thousand words. That's why it's really important that you came down here today. We know you've been with us the whole time, and um, you've been an advocate for all of us. And uh, just to stand here to look around, you can't help but make the conclusion that under no circumstance should a compressor station be located here. And um, perhaps the governor would like to come down here and stand here and take a look at what we've seen, but he's yet to come down. Appreciate you being here. Yes. Stand with my colleagues, stand with our citizens. This is about public safety and public health. It doesn't come uh, any clearer to me on those two issues than this project. Thank you. So, as you know, um, I started writing uh, on this issue with Senator Warren back you know, four years ago um, to draw more focus to it. Um, it's clear to me that. Um, that Enbridge, which is a Canadian company, uh, wants to build um, a compressor station here so that it can take natural gas and put it through a straw, essentially, all the way up to Canada, uh, and then use this location right here as the way in which they can accelerate that uh, flow of natural gas. Uh, but it's towards the goal of exporting the natural gas um, overseas. So uh, the benefit flows to Enbridge corporately, but the environmental risks are run here by uh, the residents of Quincy and Weymouth. Braintree. And Braintree, um, without any of the benefits. In other words, this is not natural gas, which is needed for these communities. It's natural gas intended by in a Canadian company to export uh, to China or to uh, Europe. So it makes absolutely no sense for us to be you know, supporting this kind of a facility given the environmental risk that it's run, given the insurance issues that uh, are raised by uh, having the potential for an accident to occur here. Um, and, uh, and that's why I'm actually gonna introduce legislation uh, to prohibit any compressor stations uh, being constructed in the United States, which has an intention of exporting the natural gas out of the Yes! Oh, yeah. <laughs> From my yeah. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So, uh, so I thank you so much for this uh, powerful uh, presentation. And you, just seeing it makes it very, very clear that mm. uh, this is absolutely a project that should not be so um, so I thank you all for your leadership the whole way we'll just keep partnering with you as you know your allies to uh, stop it from happening thank you for your engagement Senator. no thank you I appreciate it uh, anyone else want to uh, add anything for Reverend? Something about the coastal diversion too.
So wait, just <laughs> one more scientific fact, and, and yeah. I, I do want to say something to Senator Markey, is that I'll go after when it's cloudy today, and we experience on the coast quite frequently something known as coastal zone inversion. Mm. And what coastal zone inversion does is it pushes all the toxins and pollution to the ground, and it holds it there. So one of the things with the blowdowns and all of the leaking is they're claiming that, oh, it'll just dissipate, it'll just dissipate. No, it won't. It's going to stay very, very close to the ground, upping our ozone levels. We're, we're definitely going to be out of compliance with EPA regulations for ozone, but, you know, obviously none of this is being recognized. So mm -hmm. I wanted to say that, but I also wanted to thank, thank you very much, Senator Marsh. We know that you've been with us, and we know that, you know, you've got pipeline safety at, you know, legislation going on, and I've got this old yellow piece of paper um, where you had talked about if you fix the leaks, we won't need to be drilling for more gas. And that's, I don't know how old it is, but it's yellow and it's on my cork yeah. Um So I just, I did want to mention that and thank you for your leadership on environmental issues. And one more thing that I want everyone to be clear on. I know that sometimes people say that we're NIMBY we're not NIMBY. We don't believe this compressor should be on the planet, let alone here on our little tiny spot in Weymouth. Um, and actually all the off-gassing and things like that are going to put us outside of our ability to hmm. meet the standards of the Global Warming Solutions Act. And certainly it puts Massachusetts on the road to being stuck with fossil fuels and mm -hmm. literally yeah. losing our lives within the next 50 yeah, years. So what Alice is making reference to is that because we're an old industrialized state, places like um, Quincy and Weymouth and Brainerd, they had their pipes built a hundred years ago. And, uh, and these older pipes are corroding and the natural gas, the methane, is just leaking out of the pipes and going up into the atmosphere right now. So people on their bills pay for natural gas that is going through old pipelines that actually leaks out as it's going along and then that methane is actually 60, 80, 90 times more powerful than CO2 because of its additional greenhouse gas components. So what I've been arguing, and I introduced the bill to that, towards that goal six years ago, was why don't we just repair our pipelines? <laughs> you know, then we don't need new Imagine ones that. because we'll just keep the natural gas that we have already. That would be a smarter way of going rather than, you know, having this um, new uh, but, it, it, but anyway, in a way, that's almost besides the point because this natural gas is intended to go to Canada and just leave the country. Right. So it's not even about natural gas here in Massachusetts. It's not about dealing with the bills of the people here in the state because of the corroded pipelines which we have. This is, a, this is really meant as a project to just benefit a foreign company uh, mm -hmm. to sell this natural gas to uh, other countries in the world. So, um, so we thank you. We thank you all so much for your activism and uh, for your leadership on the issue. So I'm, I'll stand shoulder to shoulder with you going forward. Thank you, Senator. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank I have you. just this for later. Good. Thank, thank you, you so much for coming. So if uh, yeah, so we can, can we take a little picture here of us oh, yeah. uh, out here? So which way is the better way of uh, looking uh -huh. at this? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This way, okay. Yeah, so come on over here. Let's let's do that. <laughs>